inequalities. All right, inequalities, these are both linear. It's a good check first. The, um, so we can solve them by linear methods. If it's quadratic or any higher polynomial, you can't even use the quadratic formula um, really on inequalities. But linear, we can w solve them basically the same way as we used to. So I'm going to start by subtracting 6 from both sides here. Sorry, subtracting 7, which gives us uh, 0 on this side, and 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Then the next thing we're going to do is divide by negative 2, and here is where we have our first warning. If we divide by a negative, we need to switch the signs. So I'm going to divide this by negative 2, I'm going to divide this by negative 2. This symbol in the middle flops sides. Negative numbers, you know, work backwards. Like if you think about the negative side of the number line, um, negative 10 is to the left of negative 9, where on the positive side of the number line, positive 10 is to the right of 9. So like things flop around when we're t comparing numbers on the negative side, which is why we have to flop that around. So now we have x is greater than or equal to 3. The instructions say that we need to write it um, in inequality notation, which is this one. So that's one of our answers. We also need to write it as a number line. So when I write it as a number line, I'm going to put my number line on here. All you really need is put the number that's important to us, 3. x is bigger than 3. Um, I like using square brackets because you'll see in a second. So I use square brackets because of the or equals to. I would use um, a curved bracket if it just strictly said greater than. So there's 3, and then x is bigger than 3, so I shade it over here. x can be anywhere over here where that's bigger than 3. x can be anywhere over here that's bigger than 3. The last kind of notation you're asked to do is interval notation. And it's easiest to see if you've already drawn the number line. If you've already drawn the number line, then we just basically draw down what was shaded. So this goes at 3. Infinity is at this end of the number line, right? That uh, goes all the way out to infinity. Infinity always gets a curved because you can never actually get there. And then we just put a common between. So this end of the number line says 3 with the same symbol. That end of the number line is infinity. And we want x to be somewhere in between. 3 and infinity for an interval notation. Next one. Um, again, this is linear, so I can just subtract 5 from both sides, leaving this side with a simply 1 third x. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Now I have 1 third of x. You can divide both sides by 1 third, but the easiest way to do it is just to multiply by 3, because a third times 3 is 1. So then I get x is bigger than negative 3. Again, that's part of our answer. That's the inequality notation. The next part of our notation is the number line. So I'm going to draw a number line here, put negative 3 on it with a curved bracket this time because we don't have the um, or equal to on the bottom. And that's my number line. And then the interval notation. Again, we're just looking and we're drawing a notation for the number line. So this end is negative 3, and it has a curved bracket, so I draw a curved bracket here. At the other end is infinity of this shaded space. The right end is infinity. The left end is negative 3. So there's my answer. I looked at that negative 3 from this end, and I wrote it there. The right end is infinity, so I wrote it there. Curved brackets, if we don't have or equal to, infinities always get a curved bracket. Keep practicing.